Welcome back, future nurses. As part of our daily NCLEX prep, we continue to bring you two to three essential topics every single day, along with practice MAQs that strengthen both your knowledge and your exam readiness. Staying consistent with us will ensure you cover the most high-yield concepts step-by-step. Step. In today's session, we are focusing on the stress response, an important physiological and psychological concept that plays a major role in nursing care and often appears in NCLEX questions. So stay with us as we break it down and practice together. Before we continue, let me quickly share why our NCLEX crash course is truly the ultimate shortcut to success. This program is powered by the real experiences of more than 5,000 students who have already passed their NCLEX using these exact strategies. It has been carefully designed as a fast track system to save you valuable time, boost your confidence, and guarantee exam readiness. Inside this course, you will get 100 hours of animated crash classes that make last minute review simple and visual, along with over 500 hours of recorded lectures that explain every NCLEX topic in detail. To make sure you never get stuck, we also provide daily live classes where you can interact with experts and clear your doubts instantly. On top of that, you will practice with 5,000 previously asked NCLEX questions for authentic exam style preparation, and you will take 15 full-length mock tests in CAT format, so you train exactly the way the real exam is tested. We also include an NCLEX ebook to help with focused quick revision and give you one full year of access so that you can study at your own pace, anytime and anywhere. Right now, we are offering a limited time 70% discount, but this offer will only last for a very short period. So, do not wait. Take action now, join today, and secure your NCLEX success before it is gone. To enroll, simply visit our website. The link is also provided in the description box. Stress, by definition, is the nonspecific response of the body to any demand placed upon it. The word nonspecific is important. It means the body reacts in a very similar way, whether the stressor is physical, like surgery or trauma, or psychological, like test anxiety or financial problems. Hans Selye, the father of stress research, described this pattern as the General Adaptation Syndrome, or GAS. He explained it in three stages, alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. These stages explain how the body first reacts, how it tries to adapt, and what happens when stress goes beyond what the body can handle. The first stage is the alarm reaction. This is the body's immediate fight or flight response. Imagine a patient suddenly hearing the news of a car crash or being rushed into the emergency room. At this point, the sympathetic nervous system explodes into action. The adrenal medulla releases epinephrine and norepinephrine, which cause classic adrenergic changes. The heart rate rises, blood pressure goes up, pupils dilate, the respiratory rate increases, and glucose is dumped into the bloodstream for quick energy. Clinically, you might see a patient pacing, sweating, hyperventilating, and saying things like, I feel like something bad is about to happen. On the NCLEX, if the question asks what happens in the alarm stage, Think of these acute changes, fast, dramatic, and geared toward survival. If the stressor continues, the body enters the resistance stage. This is where the body tries to adapt and restore balance. The adrenal cortex comes into play, releasing cortisol, the long-term stress hormone. Cortisol is helpful because it maintains blood glucose and blood pressure, giving the body fuel to keep fighting. But cortisol also suppresses the immune system. That is why patients under long-term stress get sick more easily or heal more slowly. For example, a caregiver under constant stress might complain of frequent colds, or a post-surgical patient who is anxious for weeks might show delayed wound healing. On NCLEX, if you see a question about chronic stress, think of immune suppression and long-term effects of cortisol. Finally, if stress continues without relief, the body moves into the exhaustion stage. At this point, reserves are drained and the patient cannot adapt any longer. The result is breakdown. Clinically, this may show up as hypertension, ulcers, depression, or even myocardial infarction. For example, think of a patient who has been caring for a terminally ill spouse for years. Eventually, their own health collapses. On NCLEX, exhaustion equals depletion. Energy is gone and the risk for stress-related disease skyrockets. Now let us look at what nurses must assess. Stress is not only physical, it is emotional and behavioral as well. Physically, you may see tachycardia, elevated blood pressure, sweating, tension headaches, or frequent infections. 
Psychologically, patients might be irritable, anxious, withdrawn, or restless. Behaviorally, they may eat too much or too little, lose sleep, or turn to unhealthy coping like smoking or alcohol. Recognizing these patterns early is critical. So, what is the nurse's role? We step in to help the patient manage stress in healthy ways. Interventions include teaching relaxation techniques like deep breathing, guided imagery, or meditation. We encourage exercise and adequate sleep, which restore physical balance. We connect patients with emotional support systems like family, friends, or therapy groups. We also teach problem-solving and coping skills, helping patients feel a sense of control. Remember, lack of control magnifies stress. And in some cases, pharmacological support such as anxiolytics may be needed. But non-drug interventions are always the foundation. Now, let us apply this to NCLEX strategy. If you have two patients, one who is hyperventilating from acute anxiety and another who is sad about being away from family, which one is your priority? The answer is the patient who is hyperventilating. Why? Because acute physiological stress, such as impaired breathing, is always a priority over psychosocial concerns. This is where stress physiology meets Maslow's hierarchy. Physical survival needs always come before emotional ones. So here are your high-yield NCLEX pearls. The stress response is explained by the general adaptation syndrome, alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. The alarm stage is all about epinephrine and norepinephrine. The resistance stage is ruled by cortisol. And the exhaustion stage leads to breakdown and disease. Stress suppresses immunity, delays healing, and increases risk for hypertension, ulcers, and depression. The nurse's job is to recognize early signs, intervene with relaxation and support, and prioritize immediate physical threats over emotional stress. Now, solve some MCQS related this topic. Question 1. Let us begin with our first scenario. A patient has just been told of a cancer diagnosis. Their heart rate is elevated, blood pressure is up, pupils are dilated, and they are hyperventilating. Which stage of the stress response are they experiencing? Is it A, alarm stage, B, resistance stage, C, exhaustion stage, or D, recovery stage? The correct answer is A, alarm stage. This is the body's immediate fight or flight reaction with catecholamine release. Question two. Now consider this situation. A caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient reports frequent colds, poor wound healing, and ongoing fatigue. Which stage of the stress response explains these symptoms? Is it A, alarm stage, B, resistance stage, C, exhaustion stage, or D, adaptation stage? The correct answer is B, resistance stage. Cortisol is released here, helping with adaptation but also suppressing the immune system. Question 3. Moving on, let us look at the hormones. Which hormone is dominant during the resistance stage of stress? Is it A, insulin, B, cortisol, C, epinephrine, or D, aldosterone? The correct answer is B, cortisol. This hormone maintains glucose and blood pressure during long-term stress. Question 4. Here is another scenario. A patient presents with chronic hypertension, gastric ulcers, and fatigue. Which stage of the stress response does this represent? Is it A, alarm stage, B, resistance stage, C, exhaustion stage, or D, recovery stage? The correct answer is C, exhaustion stage. This is the breakdown phase when reserves are depleted and illness develops. Question 5. Let us think about prioritization. Which of these patients needs the nurse's attention first? A. A patient anxious about discharge. B. A patient crying because family has not visited. C. A patient hyperventilating with shortness of breath. Or D. A patient feeling lonely due to hospitalization. The correct answer is C. Hyperventilating with shortness of breath. On NCLEX, physiological needs always come before psychosocial concerns. Question 6. During the alarm stage, which physiological response should the nurse expect? A. Increased gastrointestinal motility. B. Pupil constriction. C. Increased blood glucose. Or D. Decreased heart rate. The correct answer is C. Increased blood glucose. This happens because the liver releases glucose to provide quick energy for fight or flight. Question 7. Now let us look at the nurse's role. Which action best reflects the nurse's role in managing stress? A. Eliminating stressors completely. B. Teaching relaxation techniques. C. Administering anxiolytics first, or D, ignoring minor stress symptoms? The correct answer is B, teaching relaxation techniques. Nurses empower patients by teaching coping methods like deep breathing and guided imagery. 
Question 8. A nurse explains to a patient that uncontrolled stress can increase their risk of infection. Which hormone is responsible for this effect? Is it A. Cortisol, B. Epinephrine, C. Prolactin, or D. Serotonin? The correct answer is A. Cortisol. It suppresses the immune system, making the body more vulnerable to infection. Question 9. Which finding in a patient indicates they have entered the exhaustion stage? A. Dilated pupils and rapid breathing. B. Fatigue and hypertension. C. Epinephrine release. Or D. Improved wound healing. The correct answer is B. Fatigue and hypertension. These are classic signs of depletion and breakdown during exhaustion. Question 10. Finally, let us test knowledge recall. Which student statement shows correct understanding of the stress response? A. The alarm stage is dominated by cortisol release. B. The resistance stage is maintained by cortisol. C. The exhaustion stage is short and temporary. Or D. The alarm stage suppresses immunity. The correct answer is B. The resistance stage is maintained by cortisol. Cortisol ensures adaptation during prolonged stress. Thank you.